Hi, I'm Bennett Fitch with Noria, and I'm here with... David Murphy, Condition Monitor and Engineer from Asset Watch. Thank you for joining us. We're going to be here talking about the top three things you need to know when you're implementing your condition monitoring program, how to get started. Um, and in fact, we looked at a survey recently that 89% of the respondents said that they rated the importance of condition monitoring and predictive maintenance as very important or critical to their operations. Yet, 41% of them are still actually running to failure. Before I get any further, I want to make sure I thank our sponsors, Asset Watch. So when we go into implementing and getting started with a condition monitoring, what's the first thing someone should think about? Um, I think education and training should be the first thing they think about. Specifically just on the different technologies that are available for your assets, I would look at each individual asset and understand what technologies you could use to prevent those defects. That's important so that people know why they're doing something different and then they see a process going into place. They're not trying to push back, but just have more team buy-in. You know, what's this yes, all yes. about, right? Yep, team buy-in. Absolutely. Okay, number two would be? Um, number two would be a criticality analysis. I would put it on an asset list of every single one of your assets and I would rate them on how critical they are to your operation, how critical they are to safety, um, and how much they cost you in downtime. You're thinking gearboxes, motors, pumps, fans, compressors, um, every piece of equipment, and just do a rating of them. Some equipment does not need to be monitored all the time because we got to think about economics and the cost compared to how much does it cost to monitor versus how much does it equipment cost you to repair or replace. Yeah, sometimes it's just fine to let it run to failure or some strategy in between. Correct. Rather than your critical, most critical machines might need a variety of condition monitoring solutions. That is correct. All right, so number three would be? A program leader or manager, someone who's in charge of all the KPIs, who's in charge of all the different technologies, who's managing the people who are actually in the field collecting the data, may even be analyzing the data, but that person is of utmost importance because they have to get buy-in from everybody else. Makes sense because that needs to be the, the core of you know, when things are kind of going awry, people can, someone can bring it back. That's that, that leader of this program. Yes, correct. So let's think about Asset Watch for a minute. You, these are sensors we have in our hands here. You want to tell yes. us a little bit how this is implemented? Yeah, so this is a triaxial vibration sensor. There's three accelerometers in here. There's a temperature sensor, and this is a magnet on the bottom side. So this is easy to install. Place it on the machine, um, and then the data goes to a hub. That hub goes via Bluetooth to a hub. After that, it goes to a hotspot. We have our own cellular network that pushes data up to the cloud, comes down to my desk, I look at the data, and we have conversations on maintenance recommendations. This sounds like a whole bunch of communication. So between right. this node and that spot into the cloud and back to the person like yourself that's helping communicate mm -hmm. what the, the next corrective action might need to be, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a critical part of everything here in condition monitoring is good communication and ability to trust the data, right? Yes, yes, correct. So communication is definitely the key. If I'm talking to somebody, a maintenance personnel person, anyone that's on the other side of the camera, because I'm working from home, right? Anyone that's on the other side of the camera, um, I want to talk to them about the equipment because I'm obviously not there. I want to see what they're seeing, know what they're hearing, know what kind of problems they've had so we can come to a solution together. That makes a lot of sense. So think about it this way. We looked at a survey that recently of over 400 people that responded and they said that the top three priorities when they started their program is to make sure it could help reduce downtime, extend the life of the machines, and have cost reductions. That's kind of all pointing in the same direction, right? Mm -hmm. So we had to think about what is condition monitoring able to do to help us figure that out. Now, it, obviously it does have an ability to reduce costs, but if it can also make the everyday job a little easier because there's less surprises, right, and not having to come in the middle of the night to, to fix something, but it's more predictive and even proactive with a with maintenance strategy. Yeah, that's, that's what we're looking at. We also provide statistics for you with Asset Watch. We go over the ROI. We'll help you walk through ROI of each maintenance recommendation that gets resolved so you can show people that may need to know, that may be writing the checks, cutting the checks, right, mm -hmm. for the service, um, that this is providing a benefit to your company, mm -hmm. right? So not only do we do that, we have analytics on space versus space or plant versus plant. So if this plant is running at this many days to resolution and this plant is running at this many days to resolution, what's the difference there? What are they doing at different sites that your site may need to do? That's important. 
So top three things, once again, is education, mm -hmm. is doing good criticality analysis and making sure we have a good program leader, someone who understands what's going on, right? Correct. So David, thank you for joining us here. And if you want more information about Asset Watch, please visit the link below. That said, we'll see you next time.